the Josie Foundation was uh, <clears throat> an idea that I had um, probably about two or three years ago, and I didn't really know how to get it off the ground. What it is, I it's a it's a foundation which I founded and and put together a group of people to <clears throat> to work on on it on the board, and it's for chronic illness. We've been at it since last December. We've had two very successful dinners that were sold out. Uh, never got media attention into the foundation and stuff yet because a foundation takes a while to get the um, you need to have a foundation within itself to actually get off the ground so we plan to launch the foundation as an official foundation in July of this coming July in 2012 that'll put us at it for about uh, since December 2010 we've worked on it we, what we do is, um, if you have MS or Parkinson's or cancers or diabetes or any of the long-term or chronic illnesses, and if you're struggling to pay the bills, let alone afford your medical bills, um, we're going to take care of a lot of things that sometimes the system cannot do for you. So most of the, the people who are having it the toughest financially with chronic illness as well, they're the type of people we'll be able to help on a first-hand basis with gasoline cards, hotel certificates, uh, grocery store certificates, and kind of a real hands-on foundation that's going to be geared to help Miramichi ears. And the album, all the costs go towards the foundation, and uh, which makes it a little more special. Josie Sturgeon was my grandmother, and I named the foundation in memory of her. She died of multiple myeloma, I think, uh, the last day of school in grade three. I never forgot that. So. Um, <clears throat> the foundation's named, or in memory at least, of my late grandmother. Okay, this song is called My Sweet Lady, and it's the number two song on the album. And this is my friend Jonathan Walls on the cone drum.
Uh, my mother. My mother always uh, sang to me when I was, uh, you know, uh, two, three, four, and five years old, and uh, ended up liking a lot of her songs. And my aunts were fans of the Beatles, and my dad started to learn how to play guitar at one point, but he didn't. Uh, he didn't learn a whole lot, but he can play a few songs still. Well, I started singing um, <clears throat> more publicly when I was about 15, 14 or 15, and eventually sang a little bit actually with the high school choir. <laughs> I think I was the only guy, and I sang a Christmas solo one year, and I was in a band in high school called Chocolate Pudding, and uh, we had a lot of fun and played a lot of uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival and um, the Beatles and Rolling Stones, and uh, we used to have a lot of fun. and went on to university and picked up the uh, guitar, learned how to play the acoustic guitar and uh, the harmonica and um, <clears throat> started playing at the, the bars when I was 17 and dance halls with uh, chocolate pudding and eventually um, started playing solo probably in around 1997 or 8, probably 98. Justin McRae, longtime friend at the time, the two of us used to play in a little duo called Jake and Justin, and we'd fiddled around with some of the songs, but mostly just played uh, local favorites and top 40 uh, alternative stuff, and uh, played a lot of the years with Darren McKinnon. We would do an acoustic and bass duo, um, sang at a lot of weddings, a lot of different situations for music. Um, remember a lot of pubs that are no longer here, like the Finish Line and the Mess Pub and Bugsy's and uh, the Tide and uh, played a lot of those places over the years and McGinnis Landing in Fredericton, Snooty Fox, the Capitol, the Upper Deck, a lot of good memories over the years.